So I've basically just come straight from uh, the uh, this Sunday's uh, Sunday brunch straight into doing today's videos today. And I, I really couldn't help but not do this uh, video, especially after talking to uh, David today. And he, David was absolutely fantastic. He's, I've, I've always wanted to ask uh, some of those questions to, to someone who sort of knows about trades. It was really great to sort of see him on uh, sort of the show today and getting, getting the opportunity to ask him those questions. So uh, once again, uh, thank you very much to sort of Max uh, again for, for inviting me on the show and, and giving me that opportunity to, to ask those questions. It was, I, I, I found it really good. I found it really fun. Uh, I hope David did as well, despite obviously our technical problems at the end. But one of the things um, David did say was that, well, in fact, two of the things he did say was that Frost was and is currently easily the most adamant person trying to pitch to get rid of the Northern Ireland Protocol. He is constantly saying, go on, guys, one more push and we'll have won. It'll be our victory. But when exactly what, it, it doesn't really make a bit of, a, you know, of sense. I think to Frost Minds, they'll win that very much vaunted sweetheart amazing deal that the Brexiteers were always talking about because again as they always said well if we leave the EU the rest of the EU will disintegrate and break up and we'll get this amazing deal to stop the EU breaking up essentially but of course that didn't happen um but obviously one of the things they wanted was that amazing much sought after US trade deal the one that would make looking staying in the single market completely ridiculous and of course, there has been a lot of push, not only just by Trevelyan, we've seen Penny Morden, but even Frost himself head over to America to try and woo the Americans into giving us a trade deal. Even going as far as Penny Morden saying that she was going around the individual states to get individual deals done. But just as the Brexiteers don't understand how <laughs> the EU works, they also don't e seem to understand how the US works as well, because individual states can't go out and do trade deals, at least as far as uh, I, I am aware. But so, yeah, there's been some serious charm offensive going on by David Frost in certainly the past couple of weeks as he's been going to Washington to try and plead his case that it's the UK that's in the right over this Northern Ireland situation. And no doubt uh, you will probably see the US, I think, step heavily up into this um, conversation at the moment because they are not happy that, shall we say, the Northern Ireland peace process uh, is in jeopardy, mostly because of the stuff we are doing around the Northern Ireland Protocol. So, as always, uh, before we do go jumping into this, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can watch Buy Me Coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do help support the channel that way. So, on with this. This comes from the Irish Times with the title of David Frost Does Britain No Favours in Its US Charm Offensive on Brexit. The British were insisting in Washington this week that no decision has been taken as yet to override unilaterally the provisions of the Northern Ireland Protocol. Again, bear that in mind that so far as they've been saying, no decision yet has been made. We'll see what happens on Monday and Tuesday with Boris's big speech and then Liz Truss set to give hers the following day. However, there certainly seemed to be preparing the ground for any such eventuality. The British know overriding the protocol would be hugely controversial, not just in Dublin and Brussels, but also amongst the key players in the United States, where the Good Friday Agreement is one of the few issues to have genuine bipartisan support. The accord is seen as a representing a very significant success story in US foreign policy, and politicians on all sides want to support it. Ahead of whatever decisions might be taken, there was a very significant British political presence in Washington this week. Uh, you know, as we said, they want to try and pull the US onto our side. Um, very much as, as something that was mentioned in, in the Sunday brunch today, that the Heritage Foundation who are very, very anti-EU, constantly, you know, pouring a lot of money into the Conservative Party themselves as, a, as like a, a, you know, a think tank uh, lobbying group, basically saying, okay, guys, we, we in the US hate the EU as much as you do. You know, we're on your side, really. 
wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And every time they go there, that's not really the case. But we'll have to see what happens this week instead. Like I say, I do expect the US to come in heavily at some point. So the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has said uh, has sent Northern Ireland Minister Colin Burns and his personal representative to the United States on the protocol issue. Two other British cabinet ministers and a former minister has also had Washington engagements. The UK ministers for transport, defence and other uh, other things to deal with uh, on, on other visits. However, David Frost, the former UK negotiator in talks with the EU, was speaking to the right wing Conservative Heritage Foundation. Imagine that, what we just said there on the topic of Britain after Brexit, which gave him very ample opportunity to set out his views on the protocol. Burns's argument appeared to be that the protocol was being implemented in a manner by the EU which had not been anticipated. As a result, it had lost the unionist community support and was now placing the Good Friday Agreement at risk, the very accord that Europeans and Americans stressed that they want to uphold. The regulations associated with the protocol were extensively burdensome, he said, and were adding to the costs for businesses and individuals. As always said, you know, the, the businesses are slowly but surely getting the hang of it, that they're getting round it. It's not becoming as much of an issue as it was before. And don't get me wrong, there are still issues around it, but this isn't something that can't be solved with people having to sit down and as, as something David pointed out, the, the nitty gritty getting into it and, and sorting it out. But there appears to be no will, certainly from Boris Johnson's government, to actually sort that out. While there had been, of course, much argument over the last year or so about Article 16 of the protocol, essentially the emergency breaks on the deal which could be applied if it was leading to some serious economic, social or environmental difficulties and are liable to persist or a diversion of trade. And of course, the focus seemed to be moving to another part of the text. British sources this week were pointing to Article 13.8, which agreed that provided the agreement to be renegotiated or replaced. Burns told the Irish Times that the British government wanted a negotiated agreement with the EU. He said flexibility was needed regarding how the protocol was implemented, and at present it did not command the unionist community's confidence. He said that the British government wanted to see the difference in the checks applied to goods from Britain that were going to be destined to remain in Northern Ireland, and of course for sale and consumption, while those intended to travel onwards to the Republic and the single uh, the single market would obviously have their checks. But even again, just because they go from there and they don't get checked, who's to say those goods then won't continue on into the EU? There's no safeguards there but I'm, sh I'm sure there are some checks in, in place but to me it seems that's a potential gold mine for smuggling potentially uh, he said um that we think there is a way to do that without having some rigorous checks for goods for sale in northern ireland he said Burns did the rounds of the Capitol Hill and met some of the main players. However, in some cases, he had to make do with talking to the political staff of the politicians rather than the actual politicians themselves. And of course, from the outset, there was very much political backrash from several Irish American political figures. On Tuesday, Congressman Ben Keating, the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Subcommittee on Europe, and Congressman Brendan Boyle, the co-chair of the Congressional EU caucuses in the House of Representatives sent a very strongly worded letter to the British Foreign Secretary Liz Truss, and it was very strongly worded. They wanted, uh, they warned that any unilateral move by the British government to override parts of the Northern Ireland Protocol would squarely threaten the Good Friday Agreement. They also suggested that Biden administration in the US was very much on the verge of appointing a special envoy to Northern Ireland. The congressman said that the worst outcome of Brexit would be one that led to violence and upheaval in Northern Ireland. The White House on Wednesday also signalled that it did not want to see any unilateral action by the British on the protocol. The White House said that Biden administration had recognised that there was a need for changes over the implementation of the Northern Ireland protocol, saying the best path forward is a pragmatic one that requires courage, cooperation and leadership. Pretty much everything Boris Johnson's government is lacking. And we urge our parties to continue engaging in dialogue to resolve the differences by bringing these uh, negotiations to a successful conclusion. Earlier in the week, the president had also apparently said uh, that nowhere at the engagement had been brought up in his, uh, in, his, in, his, in his public admiration 
of the European Union, he said that there was an economic powerhouse, a global force for peace, and something that is good for everyone. Of course, enter Frost, who told the Heritage Foundation on Thursday that talks had effectively reached the end of the road with the EU, and now the UK government had to act. He concluded that the Biden administration did not fully grasp the Northern Ireland uh, impact on the ground of the protocol and suggested that American politicians should stay out of Britain's affairs in relation to Northern Ireland, saying this. I am not convinced the niceties of the Northern Ireland are very well understood. I get significantly frustrated when we are told by a third party, albeit a very important one in this context, how to manage these issues. It is our country that had to face terrorism. So we don't need lectures from any other about the peace process and the Good Friday Agreement. Of course, <laughs> what do you think happened next? You know, there's no there's no prize for what happened here next. Of course, these comments did not go down well on Capitol Hill or even with Irish America. One political figure said that Frost was a private citizen and could say what he liked. However, his views reflected an attitude of the British government, and then they would be very well to actually remember that sovereignty worked both ways, and any British proposals for a trade deal would be dead on arrival. Frost comments emerged just ahead of the meeting between the Burns Group of academics, the former diplomats, Irish American organizations, and others who had been involved in Irish, Irish American issues down the years. Sources familiar with the meeting said that there had been very much anger among a number of the, uh, of the present amongst Frost's attitude towards Biden. A source said that the British side appeared surprised at the level of knowledge in Washington about the workings of the protocol. Of course, they helped, they helped broker it. Of course, they're going to know about it. <laughs> What's he on about? You know, some even maintained that the British arguments were even unconvincing and believed the whole issue was based around the political power plays underway within Westminster rather than Northern Ireland. And they are right on that. It is very much a power play within Westminster. The Irish side were also out and about in Washington on the protocol issue in recent days. Irish re representatives briefed the State Department and the National Security Council and the White House and various think tanks and politicians on the view of the government from Dublin. So, they also want to say that Irish sources appear to be very happy at the end of the week with senior figures in the US understood the Irish government's position and their stance on the protocol remained unchanged. As Burns headed back across the Atlantic for his, uh, after his meetings, the US Congress delegation was set to follow. Headed by Richard Neal, the chairman of the powerful Ways and Means Committee in the House of Representatives, throughout which any trade deal agreement must go and will travel to Ireland, the UK and Brussels to talk to senior figures directly about the protocol. And on Friday, Congressman Keating, who had co-authored the letter to Truss, said that any unilateral move by the British to override the protocol would not go down well on Capitol Hill, saying, My view is the EU has been negotiating, and there have been concessions and a willingness to come to a resolution, he said. I do not believe the solution is within our reach, uh, but I desperately want the British to go back to the negotiating in earnest. He said that the British were friends and allies of the Americans, and this is unfortunate to see the protocol playing out an issue the way it has. We have our own problems in the US, but this is part of who we are and how we feel very strongly about it. So obviously, again, these comments by Frost did not did not go down well in America. And I, I depending whatever happens tomorrow, obviously Boris has got his big speech. Um we don't know what he's going to say at this moment. Um certainly the attitude from Northern Ireland we are seeing is why are you here? You've got no solutions to this problem. So why are you even bothering to come over here? Don't come unless you actually have solutions. Um, that seems to be the overriding uh, certain opinion from uh, Northern Ireland. And of course, then the following day, we've got Truss giving a speech about the Northern Ireland Protocol. And who knows what she's going to say about it. But I can't imagine their speeches being very different in these two cases. Um but this is a lot of sense of deja vu. Um, we've been here before about the sable rattling. And and I think this is, again, just part and parcel to remind people of its, oh, look, we're the only ones who are standing up uh, to the evil EU. Aren't we good? Please forget about Partygate. Forget about Partygate. Forget about Partygate. I think that's a large part of uh, all this stuff, stuff certainly. Um but as always, uh, thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one up link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all next.